Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I have some romances with fantastic banter in them. I love characters that are able to banter with each other. It literally makes me giggle. I love it so much. Okay, so I have 10 recommendations for you today. And if you haven't seen my, I think I've put out three previous videos that also feature this trope. I'll link those down below in case you haven't seen those. But without further ado, here are 10 romances with 10 out of 10 great banter. First one I would love to mention is Two Wrongs Make a Right by Chloe Lees. Jamie and B are not really friends and don't really get along. Their friend group thinks that they would be perfect for each other, but upon their first meeting, they don't like the other person really. Um, they think the other person is judging them or they just get on each other's nerves. So uh, they don't get off on the right foot, but their respective friend groups are trying to set them up and they decide to basically fake date and pretend to their friend groups that uh, they're together to get them off their backs, essentially. While they're fake dating, they end up getting to know each other better and obviously end up falling for each other. There is a fine line between love and hate in this one. Since B and Jamie don't really get along all that well, they are constantly bickering and bantering <laughs> with one another to a point where like their friend groups are like, oh yeah, they're obviously together. Like look at the way that they talk to each other. Like they're an old married couple. Like that's how they talk to each other. I think they're just super cute. And I adore this book. I adore any Chloe Lee's book. You're gonna get a fantastic banter with any of the books you pick up by this author. Like she knows how to write banter between characters. If you want more of like sweet banter, I have Sweet Talk by Cara Best Stone. If you have an Audible subscription, you can listen to this book like for free with your membership. Um, all of the books in the series you're able to. I love the Love Line series. They're graphic audiobook novellas. Our hero in here, he has dyslexia and so he uses the text, uh, t uh, speech to text feature a lot on his phone. Um, and he accidentally sends one of his voice memos to the wrong person on his phone. And when he sends it, this person responds and he doesn't remember who this person is in his contacts. I think it's saved as like a nickname or something. And he's like, I cannot remember for the life of me who this person is. So he's trying to figure out who this person is that he's texting and they text each other and are on phone calls. And he's trying to figure out who this woman is that he's talking to that he's like, silly falling for and they have this playful banter between the two of them. We as the reader like know who the heroine is. <laughs> Cara Bastow knows how to write fantastic banter like Chloe Lee's. I feel like um, she writes it in like every single one of her books. It's fantastic. The audiobooks for this series are great as well and I love the narrators in here because you can feel the full like voice effects with their banter and playfulness. The hero is trying to figure out who the heroine is. The heroine already knows who the hero is but she feels like he would never actually want to go out with her if he knew who she actually was in real life um, because they have met before in person. So if you want a good novella to listen to, I definitely recommend this one. A more serious read is Glitterland by Alexis Hall. This is the romance between Ash and Darian. Ash in here is going through a lot mentally. There's a true warnings in here for mental health for sure. Um, thoughts of suicide, depression. So please be aware of that before you pick this book up. Um, but he ends up going to a club one night with some of his friends and he ends up bumping into Darian there, who is this ray of sunshine. He embraces sparkles. He embraces like just the beauty of life. And they are complete opposites because Ash is definitely like, the more like Debbie Downer, you know what I mean? Um, but Darian's just like, I'm loving him. Like, I'm gonna keep bugging him till the end of time because I love him. Like, ugh, they are so stinking cute. And the way that Ash falls in love with Darian as well, like he becomes a total ultimate softie for him. Darian in here is top notch because Ash is more of like the serious stoic type. And Darian is definitely the more sunshine, like I said. And so their personalities definitely like rub off on each other. And that's how they banter and talk to each other. And Ash is like in awe of Darian because of how positive he is, but also because he's able to talk to Darian in a way he's not able to talk to other people. I love how Darian brings out that side of him. A Rivals to Lovers Romance is Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting. I adore this book. This is my first read of the year and it's, it was a five star for me. I loved it. These two characters own rivaling next door businesses. The heroine owns a cupcake cocktail bar 
and the hero owns the bar next door that is like a sports bar and also does like axe throwing stuff and the axe throwing is like right against the heroine's wall where a bunch of like the glasses are and they keep breaking and she's just fed up with this guy's like ridiculous place and so she tries to basically kind of like prank him and sabotage his business so that definitely plays into their bantering relationship and then the hero at first like is like are you joking a cupcake bar uh but when he goes in to try the cupcakes he just has like a food gasm every time <laughs> he eats one like he loves her cupcakes so much so um definitely rivals to lovers that are also like business neighbors. They end up falling in love with each other's businesses and each other slowly throughout the book. And I just adored that. Um, but the fact that they're like playing pranks on each other and the fact that they're trying to ruin, but not really like ruin, ruin, but trying to like slowly poke at the other's businesses is super funny to me. An enemies to lovers romance, like the epitome of an enemies to lovers is Pestilence by Laura Thalassa. Their banter is very hate driven. <laughs> so Pestilence in here, he is one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse that has been sent down to basically spread sickness, plague all over the world. And a heroine has decided like she's gonna take one for the team and try and kill him. And she ends up killing him, but she doesn't know that Pestilence can't die. So he basically regenerates and his second life goal other than spreading the plague now is to make this woman pay for what she did to him so he's going to torture her in every way possible to get back at what she did to him because it was very painful to die he ends up taking her across the country the world to spread his plague and so she has to witness all these humans die and she's also dealing with this inner turmoil in her head of like how am i falling for this guy who's killing all of my kind, like what is wrong with me? But she can't help but fall in love with this guy who's slowly becoming more and more human the more time they spend with each other. Like I said before, their banter is very hate driven. They scream and yell at each other, um, but it's kind of how they show their love for each other at the same time. <laughs> A novella that I have is Cry Baby by Marina Vivancos. This was our group buddy read for the last novella-a-thon that we had. And I'm so glad we picked this one because it was so good. This is a friends to lovers MM romance. These two guys work together and they become like best friends. I don't, I think they're probably, I think they're also roommates if I'm not mistaken. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I think they're also roommates. Anyway, one of the guys goes up to his friend and is like, I think I'm into guys. Like, I don't know what to do. The other guy's already out of the closet. So he's like, you know what? I will basically help you get more familiar with being with guys um <laughs> and that i like get you more comfortable to hopefully like ask out the person you really want to ask out because i guess this guy really wants to ask out a specific person mm -hmm. but their friendship banter is super funny and super cute like you can tell right off the bat by their banter relationship that they are both heavily into each other like they are crushing hardcore. And like I say, almost every time I recommend a novella, these are great little palette cleansers, something to help with your slump or you don't know what to pick up. I always go for a short, quick novella because I hate feeling slumpy. So definitely pick this one up if you want to read a good banter-filled friends to lovers novella. A paranormal one that I have is Monroe by Cressley Cole. And I can't really talk about this book all that much because it's book number 18 in a series. Technically, it could be read as a standalone, but you won't get the full effect of the book if you don't read the other books in the series. And I hate saying that. I hate being like, you gotta go read book one, but like, you, you have to. It's the Immortals After Dark series. Okay, I, I love these books so much. Monroe is the latest book. Maybe you can read all of them just to get to this one, um, but all of them are freaking amazing. Just gotta say that. Like, they're all fantastic books. I've almost given all of them five stars. Like, they are fantastic. Anyway, so <laughs> Monroe in here is a like a which is basically kind of like a werewolf and he ends up figuring out who his fated mate is however she gets killed right in front of him and he has to figure out how to time travel back in time to save her from being killed and to like be together because he wasn't able to like form the bond that you're supposed to have with your fated mate because she died so this is a time travel romance as well um and he ends up kidnapping her from her wedding when he goes back in time to take her and she is obviously not very happy and she actually like her job is to hunt down paranormal creatures and kill them so they they're not on the same side really and they don't really get along at first and he freaking kidnapped her so they're gonna scream and yell and bicker at each other obviously during this journey 10 out of 10 love this book so much Cressy Cole knows how to write fantastic paranormal romances so like 
this was great. Ooh, a historical one. I just reread this one recently, A Night to Surrender by Tessa Dare. I have found a new appreciation for this book after I reread it. Um, and I love this. It's the first book in the Spindle Cove series. And this is a romance between Susanna and Bram. So Susanna and her father ended up creating this town called Spindle Cove because when she was like being introduced to society and staying with some extended family members, like they did not treat her very well because she was socially awkward and anxious and she was not treated well by her extended family. So she decides to make this town called Spindle Cove to basically be a solace for other women who are kind of like wallflowers or they don't really like being in society or they feel ill, like they use Spindle Cove as a refuge of sorts. Bram is a veteran for the militia. Um, he was shot in the leg and so he has chronic pain in his leg and he walks with a cane, now sometimes uses a mobility aid. And then he has been told that if he's able to form a militia in this very small, basically almost entirely women town <laughs> of Spindle Cove, he will be reinstated into the militia, which is what he really wants to do. So he decides to form this militia with this ragtag group of men in this small town. And there he meets Susanna. Literally when he's walking into the village for the first time, he literally runs her down and <laughs> thinks he's seen an angel and he's gonna try and make Susanna his eye love their relationship so much the way that they bicker with each other. I love it. I I love them so much. <laughs> Another historical with fantastic banter is How to Pursue a Princess by Karen Hawkins. Our heroine in here is trying to marry for money essentially to find a rich husband because her family's going destitute and she needs to save her family. She has two sisters and a father. She's like, I cannot let them down. I have to marry. Not necessarily for love. I would love for it to be for love, but I gotta marry a rich man. So she goes to a house party put together by her godmother who just happens to be a duchess. And there she ends up meeting Volvinsky, who is a Prussian prince. You would think that a prince will be rich, but he has told everyone like, I'm basically a destitute prince. I have no money. This is a lie. He wants to find the woman of his dreams who wants to love him for him and not his wealth and title. So he tells people he is basically destitute because he wants a woman to choose him and not money. So Volvinsky and um, I think her name is Lily. Yeah, Lily. Um, Lily end up falling in love with each other, but Lily's just like, I can't marry you. I have a duty to my family. I have to save them. I love them. And all Volvinsky wants is for Lily to choose him and not the money. So uh, I really love this one because they fall for each other very organically like I loved watching them fall in love with each other the tension between the two of them was off the charts and like I just wasn't wanting to grip his shoulders and shake him and be like just tell her you have money you'll get her just tell her you have money and the last one that I have to recommend today is Strake by Miss Ruby Dixon this is book number three in her Corsair Brother series which I do not recommend reading as a standalone. I mean, I'm not the reading police. You can read whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, but I really recommend reading these books in order. I do have a Ruby Dixon guide video. I'll link it down below to see like when you can read this book if you want to read it in a particular order that I recommend. Um, I have it all in order for you down below if you want to go watch that video. Um, but our heroine of this book is a part of a group of human women who have been taken and put on this spaceship in the middle of nowhere. The Corsair brothers in this series, they end up wanting to go on a treasure hunt and they run into Strake, who's like a space pirate. And they, all four of these guys, end up trying to find this treasure. And they go find the treasure, realizing it's this spaceship full of human women who are basically slaves. And they're like, no, no, we are not into slavery, not happening. And so they want to try and free these women and figure out what's going on and take down the people who enslave these women. So Strake in here ends up leaving all of the aliens on the spaceship and like ditching them basically at one point to go find out who did this. Her name is Ruth, ends up stowing away on his ship and is basically living in his air ducts in his ship for <laughs> like weeks to try and like be a stowaway essentially, but then also like mess with his mind. She ends up playing pranks on him while she's living in his air ducts like taking the seams out of all of his clothes and he thinks that bugs have infested the ship because his clothes are falling apart and like moving things in his room to make him think like he's going insane. Ooh, a book just fell. Anyway, um, and he ends up eventually finding her at one point and he ends up kidnapping her and chaining her to his bed. Um, and 
and that's all I can really say. These two are hilarious. Like they are so stinking funny. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 recommendations, romance recommendations with amazing banter in them. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, but if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a purple heart emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.